Amen. All right, audio is live. <laughs> <clears throat> So do welcome we want to, to Minecraft you? Monday. Yippee! Woohoo! Minecraft Monday. This is a cool little area, like a little lecture hall. We can sit in a minecart and listen. I didn't have to see if I can see over your head if two people sit in a row. Kind of. Alright. I'll call this um, little auditorium here inspired by Second Life. <laughs> wow, I did it. I think. I think I landed in the cart. You did. Wow. This is great. Okay, so remember to take pictures, everybody. Oh, okay. F1 turns off the interface, and then you can take a picture with F2, and then turn the interface back on. <clears throat> oh, I'm not sitting in it. Curious, are other people hearing my thing pop when I make copies? No. <laughs> I'm not. I didn't hear anything. What? Because <laughs> I don't want to drive you crazy. I'm doing, yeah, I'm trying to do some screenshots, so. Good. It's awesome. I want to just give people maybe a minute or two more to, sh to get in, and then we'll get rolling. So Anti-Spiral King is a science teacher at a middle school right down the road from the elementary school I teach at. So I thought he might want to come in and hang out because I, I know they're trying to get Minecraft going at his school. And uh, uh, just thought it would be cool to get him involved in this. Very cool. Um, he's very knowledgeable about mod packs. Oh. In fact, on, on my channel, if you, if you look, there's a, a Feed the Beast base that he made using applied energistics and a lot of things I don't even know the name of yet. So it's, uh, it's I guess Microsoft would call it robust. Oops. <laughs> See, what did I tell you guys? What'd you do? I destroyed my little cart I was going to oh, sit in. Here. <laughs> Let me see. Let me get out. I'm dangerous. Oh, Mr. Zwa, you going to give me another one? I'm trying to. I was trying to, too. I wouldn't go in. That's you got to put rail down first. Oh. oh. Okay. Um, the rail goes the wrong way, so you have to put two pieces of rail and then delete that one. Okay, and I'm supposed to just left um, right click to be able to get in it, right? Correct. And then left shift to get out. <sighs> okay. Now I'm I'm worried I'm going to destroy it again. Oh, don't worry about it. We got plenty of seats. Don't tear up the auditorium seat, kids. Ah, see? I'll just stand. <laughs> oh, poo. Try using your other mouse button. Um, that's my problem. I'm trying to use the magic mouse on my 
Mac. Yes. Oh. oh. Okay. Two fingers on the magic mouse. Oh. <laughs> really? I'm fine standing. <laughs> <laughs> She's a mess. <laughs> oh, so, okay. Here, I got one more thing we got to try. Give me hold my control. second life stuff. Do hold, what? Hold the control key on your keyboard and then click on a cart. Hold the, the control key on my Mac. Yep. Okay. And just regular click the cart. Regular click the cart. Nothing's happening. I bet shift. Oh. <laughs> No, that didn't do it. Shift didn't work either. I I put used two fingers on my trackpad to double to well, right click. I did that before and it disappeared. Okay. Oh. oh I'm stopping. You won't have an auditorium left if I keep trying to sit down again. <sighs> So shall we get started? Let's do. So maybe we want to go around and do introductions. I don't know. Is that standard? We can do that. Well, I'll start. Um, uh, I'm this crazy guy here standing in the middle of the floor. Um, my name is TechBlux Engineer. My, my, my real name is Blake. Um, somehow I got involved with um, Mary or Main Cakes, so who somehow knows Kim. Um, I'm a computer engineer by day, <laughs> super geek by night. Um, hopefully today we can do a little um, introduction to World Edit, which is a tool that lets you edit large regions in Minecraft, copy and paste things, shift things, um, set regions to a certain type of block, and we'll do a little um, introduction to that. All right, so let's go around. Uh, we'll start on my left here. We'll start with Jazz. I'm Jasmimo Zimini, um, more of a second lifer than a Minecrafter. I consider myself still a beginner because I haven't been real successful at doing anything except destroying stuff. <laughs> but um, I want to learn and um, hopefully someday be able to start my own Minecraft club at school. Awesome. Go to Kim next. K4. Okay. I'm K4 Sons. I'm Kim, the um, the current chair of the VISTI VEPLN. Um, I love Minecraft. I have a Minecraft club at school. I'm on my third club. Um, we're currently working on John's plan to make Minecraft Machinima. So this week on Thursday, my my second and no third and fourth graders are going to learn how to edit the video they took in Minecraft with. Windows Movie Maker. Cool. Very cool. How about net how about Nitro Pixel next? Entropy Mel, you mean? Excuse me. Correct. <gasps> um it this comes from um entropy. And someone had already taken entropy and TRPI, so I had to be entropy mill here. Anyway, um, I am, uh, I never know what to say. I have, I got my teaching credential 20 years ago. I've been in the classroom, but now the classroom, I'm now technically out of the classroom. And because of a class I took a year ago, um, and I could not get MC Edu licenses. And I thought that was really awful that I, a human being, could not get a license. So I started a nonprofit and my nonprofit has the licenses. So our, our nonprofit is uh, in stasis at the moment. We, we got the um, 501c3 um, designation where we need to work on building our virtual machines because we want to make Minecraft Edu available to anybody who wants to use it and that's part of our so right now we're stuck i need to get my engineer to build the virtual machines because i need to practice how to set up minecraft edu so that teachers can use it and then hopefully we can host a classroom of teachers who otherwise couldn't use minecraft edu because they couldn't get the license but now that microsoft owns it 
I don't know if we're going to be completely moot and useless. So anyway, if you have ideas about what to do with my, um, my nonprofit, because we would like to, we, our goal is I, I want to help teachers who can't use programs like this in their classrooms because I, I know what it's like to work at a dysfunctional school. I did. And anyway, I just want to help people in that situation. Awesome. Well, hopefully they won't uh, restrict the use of Minecraft EDU so much and maybe they'll even give it to the public domain and just let everyone use it for free. But Microsoft gives something away. Yeah, we'll find out. Wishing for the best. How about uh, Miss Glenn next? Hi, I'm Linda Geelin. Can you guys hear me? Yep. I don't, but, okay, yeah. okay. I've been using Minecraft uh, and Minecraft EDU since 2011 with our students. I'm at an all boys school, uh, private school. And uh, so we have a lot of flexibility. We have a lot of leeway. And basically, I can say I want to do something and I get to do it, which is great. Um, so I've been uh, doing it with, we, well, my husband is the computer teacher there, so both of us work on the projects we do with Minecraft. We've been using it for uh, programming with our sixth graders, uh, using the ComputerCraft EDU. We've been doing quantum physics with uh, QCraft. Nice. We've done uh, like a farmland, that uh, a map that I created that's kind of a city building thing. We use Pam's Harvest Craft and custom NPCs and a bunch of other mods that um, Minecraft EDU allows us to use or is works with Minecraft EDU. So I've been doing this for quite a while and I enjoy being part of a community where I can help out in any way because I've done pretty much most of everything uh, on my own. You'll see uh, my name in Discord is Technoscribe. That's actually my YouTube oh. channel. So that's that's who I am in uh, outside of the school, I guess you could say. Um, so I also have a YouTube channel and I do videos and stuff like that on Minecraft in that one as well. And that's it for me. Awesome, thanks. How's it going, Zwa? It goes. So uh, I'm uh, I'm Zwa. I'm actually John. Um, and uh, I have uh, currently, this is the first year we've had Minecraft in my school system. And uh, we have two after school clubs. And I'm very fortunate to work at a school where teachers uh, have been really accepting of it to the point where I'm having trouble keeping up with the demand for curricularly related lessons. Um, and I, uh, I, I came to this job a, a little odd. I have, a, I have a bachelor's degree in music education and a master's degree in conducting and composition. And here I am uh, teaching computers. So, uh, yay. <laughs> and that's all. Great. Anti-spiral key. How's it going? I don't know. Let me see if I can work in. Oh, good. We can hear you. Um, I'm, uh, Todd, I, my game handle is, uh, Anti-Spiral King. Uh, I was an elementary teacher for nine years and, and have moved up to middle school. And, uh, there's a, a lot of interest in, with the kids and others to have a Minecraft club. So I've been watching what John's been doing at his school and seeing how we can set it up at, in the middle school level. So is that Todd? Can, can people hear Todd? I can't hear Todd. I, I can hear Todd fine. Interesting. I heard him. Try talking now, Todd. Okay. Can you guys I hear him? Nothing. That's funky. I don't hear him anymore. That's bizarre. I'm Sorry, not God. saying anything. Now I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, we're trying out a new chat system, Todd. So we're still getting used to it. All right. I just don't usually say much. That's okay.
So, for someone that can't hear Todd, I'm sorry. Um, okay, there we go. Great. I don't hear anybody anymore. So I think Todd said a couple oh, good. things in the chat. He's trying to set a club up at school. Okay. Been a teacher for 10 years and has some Minecraft ability. Okay. Awesome. So is Mrs. Recker here? I don't think she's in Discord. Okay. Um, well, this is going to be hard for her. I wonder if we can get her in Discord. Excuse me. Has anyone used uh, World Edit before? I know uh, Kim's been playing with it and Zala's been playing with it. Yes, I've used uh, World Edit both in regular vanilla Minecraft and um, the World Edit that comes with Minecraft EDU. Awesome. You can correct me if I ever say anything wrong. Hopefully this is... Uh, Pretty awesome. Oh, it looks like Mrs. Records joined us. Yeah, please speak up and tell us anything that's different in EDU because I'm trying to move mountains and not having a whole lot of luck. Yay, she's in. I just have to get her to unmute. So, Mrs. Record, if you can hear us, there's a, a mute button. If you're using a, a web client. At the bottom of your screen, you'll see the beginning of your username, and just to the right of that, there's a little microphone icon with a red line through it. If you click that, that'll on you. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think if I'm homesick tomorrow, I will probably uh, do a little uh, sheet to help people out with the settings and getting on and everything. All right, so maybe as Ms. Record gets on. Oh, can you hear us, Ms. Record? <clears throat> My name is Meg. Yes, I can hear you. Another one. Yay! Yay! Oh, I can't hear. What the hell? I'm going to refresh. <laughs> That's too bad. Well, her thing says it's not muted, so. I will say that the, the desktop clients. I mean, I can hear everyone rock solid. You're just rubbing dirt in, aren't you? <laughs> Rub it in, Zola. <laughs> nah, 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 nah. <laughs> I've oh, got you a guys dedicated are client. All right, so uh, let's get started. So the first command to learn is the wand command. And you can all see that the tool I have is a wooden axe. And this is one difference between Minecraft and Minecraft EDU. In EDU, the tool is not an axe. It is a different tool. It's a, just a stick. And they did that just uh, to make it a little more intuitive. Uh, I think they just confuse it because they change it. But um, the moral of the story is if you type the command slash forward slash forward slash wand, I'll put a dot in front of it so you can see. So if you were to type that command and go right ahead, it's not going to do anything to the world. All it's going to do is give you a wooden axe. So you can you can use this command to get a wooden axe, or you can go to the creative memory and grab out of the tools 
a wooden axe. Okay, so once you have a wooden axe and you want to make a selection, you can select any two blocks in the world and it will select all of the area between them. So if I left click this red block, the red wool, and I right click the green wool, I don't have all these blocks selected. So um, Nitro, Nitro Mel, you, you don't type the dots. The dots are just so you can see the command instead of running it. So when you when you guys run commands, you don't need the dots in front of the forward slashes. All right, so I'm going to show you the area I have selected. I'm going to do set dirt. So this is the area that's selected by, by left clicking the red block and right clicking the green block. So the way I changed this area was I typed the command slash slash set dirt. And there's the set dirt command. All right, so those are the first two commands. If everyone can come out here and grab a plot, there's plots um, kind of like a bingo board maybe. I don't know. Grab a plot. Everyone can have one. There's a whole bunch of them. Pick one, anyone. They're all just the same. Oh, it looks like the pigs have invaded. <laughs> now, I haven't used uh, World Edit in a while. Is um, is the little flashing red particles something new? So the little flashing red particles is another mod that we have installed on the server called the World Edit Selection Visualizer. Oh, okay. Uh, when you go to use this in Minecraft EDU, you probably won't have the, the particles, right. but it's great to use to just to get started. Oh, no, So definitely. just remember when you're running all the commands I just showed you, you don't need the dot. The dot is just so I can show you the command and it doesn't run it for me. So everyone should start with the wand command if you haven't already run that. And then left click the red block and right click the green block. And remember, you need to keep the, the wooden axe as your hot item. So it needs to be selected uh, as if you were going to use the axe on the tree. So once you've done the selection, go ahead and do a forward slash forward slash set and then pick an item. Looks like Kim's got this down. She's setting some diamond. So forward slash forward slash set and then maybe wood. Uh, Nitro Pamel, you need to push left shift to get out of your seat. That's the left shift key. And don't mind me flying around. I'm kind of playing cameraman. Because we are live streaming this on YouTube. So you can show it to your administrator for PD credit. <laughs> Anyone need help? Are there any questions? Well, I'm still having trouble getting my wand. <laughs> me too. So don't wait for me. I do not want to hold anyone up. So I found that I needed my number one slot in my action bar to be empty. And then when I did slash slash wand, a wand appeared in that slot and I picked it up. Okay, I'll try that. I keep being told I'm not permitted to do it. And am I in the right mode? What mode should I be in? Um, and who is that? Ms. Meg, sorry, Meg Swecker. All right, let me make sure you're opt. Oh, Go sorry, ahead and try it again, I'll just opt you. Oh. And you've got one. Thank awesome. you. Okay, so everyone's kind of figured out how the selections work, right? So it's kind of a cuboid selection. Now if you, what would happen if the, you left click and then right click the same block? Like let's say everyone left clicks of the red wool and then right clicks the red wool. Or just pick any block, it doesn't have to be the wool.
Notice how it just selected that one block. You just have the red particles around that one block. So let's say we want to change this one block to some other thing. How can we do that? So you type slash slash set base and the thing that you want it to be. All right, so let's make it dirt. I should like set dirt. Awesome. Makes sense. So let's say I wanted a larger area selected than just this one measly block. Well, there's an awesome command that helps us expand the selection we have. And that command is slash slash expand. So the, the expand command works in an awesome way. It has it takes two things as what we call arguments or, or operators that it works with. So if we type slash slash expand, and then how many we want to expand. So let's say we want to expand five, and then the direction you want to expand, and we want to expand five up. So now everyone should be able to make an awesome column of quartz. And there's the command I ran, just for reference. We fill the same way as we set the area. It's the slash slash set command, and then what you want to set it with. So that's the, let's say, quartz in this case. Slash slash set quartz. Of course, you can pick any item name, and if you need to, you can look up the item number or the item code on the internet. You can say, what's the code for wool if you want green wool? Or, but we'll get to that one later. Well done, Entropy. It without you. Can I delete this tower that I have selected? So the way you delete is you set it to air, and the code for air is zero. So you can say slash slash set air, or you can say slash slash set zero. Oh, I like it. Whoops. And eight is water. All right, so the next command is, well, we did expand. Um, I want to do expand a direction. So let's say I want to expand my tower towards the blue wall. I can say slash slash expand, and I can say five. And as long as I'm looking at the blue wall, it's going to expand in that direction. You could um, press the F3 button on your keyboard and look at which direction your player is facing, and then type that in the command, but that's the hard way. You just look in the direction you want to expand. And now I'm gonna make a wall, slash slash set, dirt, and I've got a nice dirt wall. I did not know you could set that by looking in the direction, thank you. A great shortcut, because having to look it up every time is kind of a pain. Wow. Usually for up and down, I usually just type up and down because it's easier than looking up and down, but... Kind of seeing how these tools work, is there any question? Anybody need help? <laughs> Love it. 
No TNT, Zwa. Come on. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so sometimes you make a selection and you expand it. And then you realize you've made a mistake. Like your wall is too long. So you can undo any of these commands. You do slash slash undo. And it's just like it never happened. It's like the best pink eraser you can buy. Undo is not persisted between login and logout all the time. So your undo log doesn't necessarily go back all the way as you'd hoped. So just be careful and mindful of that as you're working with programming. Okay, so we've learned undo, and of course there is redo, slash slash redo. What a great command when you undo something you didn't mean to undo. What's better than undoing the undid thing? Uh, putting back what you erased to make the thing. So we have talked about selecting, we've talked about setting regions, and we've talked about expanding, undoing, and redoing. Now, of course, there's a contrary to expanding. We have a, a command called contract, and sometimes you expand it too far, and then you want to contract your selection. So I made my wall here, and it's six high by six wide. So I'm going to contract this selection. So if everyone can build a wall, that would be great. And then we can all be on the same page. We're going to go from a wall to a cube. I bet I think she's in, but I don't see her. <laughs> Oh, Miss Glenn, she thinks she's in the Discord. Oh, there she is. Can you hear us now, Beth? <clears throat> yeah, I can. Awesome. I just asked everybody to make a little wall that we can uh, practice the next command on. So the beginning of this was we started with the wand command. So to get a world edit wand, you have to have the first spot in your hotbar clear. And then you have to type slash slash wand to get the wand. We got a couple of walls here. All right, so the next command was contract. And so let's everybody select your wall. And then let's look towards, um, I guess we got walls going in different directions. So, so K4 and this is Glenn, you want to look towards the orange wall, and everybody else look towards the blue wall. And let's type slash slash contract. Um, let's, let's contract two, and you're looking towards the wall. So now if you look at your particles, you can see that less of your wall is selected. And you can highlight the part of the wall that's selected, of course, by doing a slash slash set. Um, and I'm going to make mine uh, uh, 
stone oh. to contrast the dirt. So of course then you can expand the selection um, and contract works just like expand by the, the last parameter is the, du the direction. And if you don't supply it, it, it contracts in the direction you're looking. All right, so the next commands that we, we want to do, I want to show you how to build a house. So if everyone could select a single square, square um, I'm going to select this one here. I'll make it green in my square. Just pick a square kind of in one of the corners of your uh, parcel and select it by left-clicking and then right-clicking. So that's only one select. All right, so now we're going to use the expand command. So we're going to expand um, 10. Uh, this is a 15 by 15 parcel, so you should be good as long as you're towards the edge. So we'll do a slash slash expand 10. Then I'm going to expand 10 in the other direction. So 10 towards the blue wall and then 10 towards the orange wall. So this is going to give us a nice outline for the foundation of our house. And if you want to go ahead and set that to something, maybe be wool or something else, that'll give you a nice, what your foundation, your house will look like. Awesome. Seeing some foundations popping in here. Who's making an expensive house out of quartz? So now, okay. I want to move it down one. Okay. So if you like go it. ahead and undo that, and then you use the shift command, which we'll talk a little bit more about later. Okay, you can, I can wait. You can shift your selection down one. So if you undo what you did to make that, and then you shift down one, and then you uh, do your set again. Will the shift command work in direction you're looking as well? Yes. Cool. Glenn, are you making your house the hard way? We, if we uh, select the corners, then you'll be able to use world edit. If you just select two corners, you'll have the whole base set, and you don't have to paste all the blocks in. Okay, so everyone who's got their foundation selected, let's go ahead and expand, um, how about eight up? That'll be a little tall, but we'll do it. And then I'm going to make mine, I'm going to use the command walls, slash slash walls. And I want my walls to be made out of wood. So I'll do the slash slash walls wood command, and that's going to make me a nice house out of wood, and you didn't have to place all the blocks. So again, to do that, we make our foundation, then we expand up, and then we use the walls command. The walls takes one parameter, and that's what you want your walls to be made of. Awesome. So we also have the set command that we learned a little bit about earlier, right? And that would fill the whole space with whatever item you want to set it with. And there's one more command that's really helpful. It's very similar to walls. It's called outline. And that will put in a foundation because if you notice, my the bottom of my house is still wool. So you can use the 
slash slash outline. And then what you want the outline to be made out of. I'm gonna make mine out of stone. Now if you notice, even the the very bottom of the selection is turned to stone. This can be useful for making large boxes. Or if you have students that are misbehaving, you can draw a big box around them and then make it out of obsidian. And if they're not in creative mode, you've got them trapped. So there's a couple more commands that are really very useful. And, and the first one I want to cover is replace. So let's say there's a mountain and or some structure that already exists and you want to replace all of the stone with wool. You can do slash slash replace. We're going to replace stone with wool. And there's a command for that. So the item you want to replace, space the item you want to replace it with. <laughs> My selection was your house. <sighs> Gotta be careful what you click when you're in World Edit. Oh, it's easy to figure out. It's just, you know, using it, you become familiar with it. Well, that's what happens when you put yourself on mute and then forget. <clears throat> so, so I'm gonna, I am gonna. really like building bridges. And sometimes I build really intricate bridges or minecart paths. 
So here's an example. I've got this water, and I'm going to build a bridge with some wood and some fence. And then I'm going to select from this red block to this green block. Now, so my selection is the red and green, and then I'm going to use the stack command. I'm going to stack 12, and it's going to go right across the water. Wow! So this is really great, because if you mess up your bridge and you're like, oh, shucks, I wanted, um, I wanted this middle one to be brown. I can change it in my part that's selected, and then just rerun the stack command. And I don't want these green blocks. I don't want these red blocks. So I'll just take right care of those. And you can also do patterns. So let's say I wanted to do brown blocks like this. I'm going to expand my selection. So now it's selected from that green block to this green block. And I'm going to do my stack 12 again. And you can see how I get this awesome pattern. But remember, I did my stack 12 and I had two blocks selected. So I stacked those two blocks 12 times. So that made me 24. So that was a little too far. Oh, you make it look so easy. I'll do stack six instead. And I don't want these green blocks. Whoops. So if you don't want to delete your house, you don't have to. You can just uh, grab a new area, a new parcel, since we have so many of them. Hmm, that didn't do what I thought it was going to do. Absolutely, Jazz. It's been a lot of fun. So stack is great. Um, one of the things I really like doing is building minecart systems. So I kind of do that a lot with stack. Especially because one of the tricks, and I'll show you a cool little trick here, is if you want a fast minecart system, you need a lot of powered rails. But those powered rails need energy sources. 
Um, so you can do what some people do and put redstone torches or redstone blocks the whole way. But I came up with this really cool idea. Why don't you just use the detector rails to power the powered rails? And I just built that by hand. Shame on me. Um, what happens when you get talking? So I'm going to make my pattern and I want a powered rail and then I want a detector rail. And I'm just going to stack that right across my bridge. So I find the stack command really useful, especially when you want patterns of things. Do the end over here. I want a power rail, and then I want a detector rail, and then a power rail. And then I'll just select these two rails and do a stack six. And of course, we need white cards. I think Tim could ride minecarts all night long if we'd let her. Alright, so we got a couple more fun commands that we can do. And if everyone wants to come over here to the awesome wall that uh, Anti Spiral King made, these are not building commands but moving commands. So let's line up right here, everybody on, on a. On a we call these, we'll call them the green wool squares. And if you stand on this green wool square and then you type forward slash forward slash THRU, you'll be teleported through the wall that he made. Whoosh! <laughs> and if That's you want to go through, you can type through and it moves you in the direction that you're looking. Kind of fun. So if everyone comes inside the awesome build that's been made, then let's type forward slash forward slash ascend. So I always type wrong the first three times I try. Ooh, I'm on top of it. So that brings you up one level, which is very helpful if you're building like a, a school or a museum that's multi-leveled, you can ascend and descend the various levels. So of course, just like ascend, we have descend. So and everyone that's on the top can of course type descend to get on the bottom. And if you're on the bottom and you type descend, you go into this black abyss down below. I don't recommend doing that. But ascend can help you, and that's a really great point, Jazz. It can help you get out of a cave. And in Minecraft EDU, there's a surface button, which is pretty good, too, if you get trapped in a cave in Minecraft EDU. So those are, we have Ascend, we have Descend, we have Up, and we have, we didn't do Up yet, we have Through. So Up is another great movement command. Let's say I want to build a platform at 50 blocks above where I am right now. So I can type forward slash Up and 50. And that's going to bring me up and put me on the glass tile 50 blocks above. So if you want a nice Ooh. lookout while your kids are working, that brings you right up nice and high. That's awesome! <laughs> so here's a cool trick. If you left-click cool. and that's then right-click your glass block, you have it selected. 
and then you can look in a couple of directions. Make sure you have your uh, wand selected. Uh, I'm going to expand mine uh, five towards the blue wall and then five towards the orange wall. Now I've got a nice dirt platform and I can descend. And of course I can ascend back to my awesome platform. Okay, that's really cool. So if you have this installed on Minecraft EDU and your students are doing something, um, you can always use slash slash up 50 and have a nice aerial view of what's going on. And you can be invisible while you're doing it. Yeah, you and your invisibility potions. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like using invisibility potions while, while uh, teaching is kind of the opposite of uh, what you'd want to do. It's cool when they aren't sure you're there. Especially playing hide and go seek. It would be using amazing if you could do that in the physical world. Using invisibility potions when playing hide and go seek is cheating. <clears throat> <laughs> Awesome. So we got a couple of movement commands, and we've talked a lot about expanding selections, contracting selections, creating walls, creating outlines. One of the things that I always forget to mention, because it's kind of second nature to me, is let's say you have something selected, and you're done working with it, and you just don't want to mess it up. There's, Of course there's a way to deselect the area you have selected. And that's slash slash D E S E L for deselect. And if you uh, notice, all that happens is your nice red outline just kind of evaporates. And the sheep. So earlier we talked um, because Kim had her foundation too high. Uh, the particle mod's name is the World Edit Selection Visualizer. And with Forge, I bet you there's a way to do a client mod for that, but the mod that we're using here is because we're on a bucket server and not a Forge server. I'm not sure if there's a compatible version for Forge, but we'll have to do it. Alright, so if everyone wants to make a selection that's ground height, I'm going to make a selection here at this red one and this green one. Now this is selected, I'll do a slash slash set dirt, and now I've got a nice little dirt platform. Let's say I want another dirt platform that's four blocks above this. We have a great command called shift which shifts the selection we have. So I'm just going to move my selection, which is slash slash shift, up uh, five up. There's a command for that. So now if you notice your selections in the sky and you can do a slash slash set stone or pick a material, and there you have an awesome I, I'm having a hard time calling that awesome, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that is cool. So, that's shifting. There's also moving. What do you think the difference is? This is, this is a good trivia question right here. The um, original thing 
actually moves. I hope. You got it. So I just moved two down. But the thing to notice with the move command is my selection doesn't change. So we have shift and we have move. Two which are quite useful. So you typed move um, space two space down? Correct. There's that command. Okay. Too bad Mary's not here. Yeah, she would have loved this, but she can listen to the video. Okay, when you created the space for us to work, sure. what did you type to clear this area and make it flat? What did you do? So what I did was I selected a couple of places. So I'll do an example here. I'll select this red square. And I'll select this green square. The one at the top. Okay. So now this whole cube is selected. And I can do a slash slash set zero. Oh, okay. And that okay. clears this, this whole square is cleared. Okay. I can actually do, a, this is kind of fun, I could do a slash slash shift. Mm. Oh, actually, I need that. And I've cleared that square. All right, I have to go out in the world somewhere and try that. That's pretty easy. If everyone wants to grab a spot and clear it, that'd be fine. Uh, and then I got one more set of commands that's super helpful, and of course that's copy, cut, and paste. So let's start that at 9.05. So we'll take a break for two minutes if you want to okay. go find a place and flatten it out. Okay. Lost my first block. Oh, there it is. Nope, that's not it. Oh, well. Oh, wow. I like it. Who spawned all the chickens on the platform? Someone is having too much fun. More sheep out. I'm just going to tag them. I have learned so much tonight. 
This is going to make me an awesome Minecraft teacher. Already were, though. I don't know. Now I feel like I'll be able to build worlds that, that my kids need to do assignments that I have for them or their teachers have for them. <clears throat> I was struggling today trying to make, find and make a world with the right kind of mountains. And this is going to be so much easier. Set air is really good for tunneling, too. Say that again, Zor? Set air is really good for tunneling, too. I, I did my, my new rail cart tunnels using it, and it just makes it easy. You mean stack? No, for digging tunnels. For clearing out the space for tunnels. Oh, set air. I thought yeah. I did There we go. We have a lot of sheep in Jeb. <laughs> One of the kids on the East Coast Miners server named a whole bunch of cows Longhorn Steakhouse. <laughs> what does that do to them? Uh, nothing. It's just funny. <laughs> Makes them sound delicious. Yeah. All right, I kind of missed the 905 time spot, but hopefully everyone got a chance to uh, set a big flat area. Now, copy, cut, and paste. These are kind of hard to explain, and sometimes they kind of mess with your head. So if you want to grab uh, maybe a new um, square to work in, and let's use this default red and green wool. Let's make a box of wool that's got one side that's all green, three high, and then that's got one side that's all wool that's three high, red wool. And we'll make the middle another colored wool. How about purple wool? The reason we need these colors is because it's, it's going to make it clear, hopefully, um, when we do copy and pasting, um, what's what. So now you need to make two of the corners different colors. So I'm going to use blue and pink. I'll make this corner blue and this corner blue. Just make a cube that the corners are a little different. It doesn't have to be exactly this cube. Okay, make the corners different. Yeah, your cube's not quite mm. tall enough, Tim. Oh, okay. It'll be three high. Okay. Awesome. So now we'll use our, our once you can make some final cores. Let's use the two corners we selected, we, um, we changed, and those will be our selection points. So now our whole cube should be selected.
Okay. So pick one of the corners. Um, hopefully one of the corners you made different is touching the ground. So go stand near that corner on the ground, and we're going to do the copy command. So stand on the ground near one of the corners that's touching the ground that's different, and type slash slash copy. Now go ahead and move away from your cube and do slash slash paste. Hmm. Wow. So notice how when you paste, where you paste is relative to where you copied from. So now I'm going to undo my paste. Now I'm going to stand above my cube. I'm going to fly on it. And then I'm going to do a copy from here. So I'm going to rerun the copy command. I'm going to move away from my cube and I'm going to run paste again. So if I stand on it and copy and then go get on the ground, it's going to be under me. Yep. That's a good one. Love it. So another um, trick you can do is once you've copied something, you can rotate it. So let's say I wanted my cube on the ground right next to my old one. But instead, for me, I want my blue corner 90 degrees from where it is. So if you stand on top of your cube and you run your copy command, and then you get off your cube, run slash slash rotate 90. This is going to rotate the, the cube on your clipboard. And now you can do a paste. And you'll see that the cube has been rotated. Whoops. Okay. I use copy and pasting quite a lot find it super helpful. You build something just the way you want it, and then you put it in a bunch of areas. And just before we started this lesson, Kim was talking about doing a, a volcano uh, challenge with her kids, and wanted to build one volcano and then copy and paste it 12 times for the 12 different groups. That's great. But what if you want to copy and paste something, and you want to save it for the future? And one example of that is, you know, Zwa built this minecart station over here. And I built one as well. I want this minecart station so maybe I can paste it next time and I don't have to go recopy it. So you can create what's called a schematic that saves what's on your clipboard. So then you can load that schematic next time and paste it. So I'm going to save my cube. I'm going to copy something else, and then I'm going to load the cube and paste the cube again. All right, so I'm going to stand on top of my cube. I'm going to run the copy command to get it onto my clipboard. Now I'm going to do a stem, S-C-H-E-M, for schematic. You can also type it all the way out, but I'm too lazy for that. Schem, and I'm going to save it. Now, the, the names for these schematics um, have to be... Uh, no spaces 
Oh, and I think you can pretty much use any character you want, and if it won't let you, it will holler at you. But most of the time, I just call it like, um, you know, like minecart station one or whatever. One thing to remember is that when you make a schematic, anyone who has world edit will be able to use that schematic. So that also means that you can't name your schematic the same as I name mine. So if I do a schematic save cube, and then you do a schematic save cube, you just saved over my schematic. So I'm going to do a schem save, and I'm going to type cube, and then I'm going to type te. That way we don't collide with our names. There's the command. I've saved it. Now I'm going to copy a new structure I'm going to build. Oh, uh, I don't know. So, no one in the world, in the whole wide physical world, could have had the same name? Or just nobody in our little world? Nobody on this server. Okay. That's Whenever I save a schematic, I always, like, append my name to the beginning of it. <laughs> so, where is it when you save it? Is it in... Our server somewhere in the console in a file. So when you save that schematic, it's actually saved as a dot schematic file. And if you load up your um, your server config page, if you are if you have like multi prep like we do on Beast Node, you can go in and view all the files. And if you go into the plugins directory, and then you go into the world edit directory. Inside the world edit directory, there's a schematics directory. And then that directory is a list of all the schematic files that people have saved on your server. And that's also where you can upload schematic files if you find something you like on minecraftschematic.org or other websites that have uh, schematics uh, and at Minecraft and the like. So if you upload a schematic file there, then we can use load. So the command to load a save schematic is slash slash scam load and the name. So there's one example. I typoed that already. S-C-H-E-M. Or you can type out the word schematic, which is just a little longer. Okay, so first you copied it. Then you did the schematic thing to name to save and name it. Right. Okay. So and then at any point later in the future you can load that schematic. That's amazing. So, Kim, if you build the volcano and you really like it, you should save a schematic of it. That way, in the future, you can just reload that schematic 12 times, and you don't have to rebuild it. That's what I'm thinking. So, I could go find this cross-section of a mountain that I've done here and save the schematic. And if I can find it, I can take it to school and load it. You've got it. Just in the plugins directory, there's the world edit plugin, which is, of course, the one we've been working with. And in there, there's only a couple of folders, and one of them says schematic. So much like copy, there's also a cut command, which instead of leaving what you've selected behind, it takes it away. That is the majority of the useful commands that I use fairly regularly. Some of those a little less regular, but... Now, if you remember all those, after one use of them, you're doing really good. But I always have to look at the documentation. And lucky for us, there is a great resource. And if you go to Google and you type in World Edit Reference, this fantastic website comes up. Creator of World Edit is SK89Q. And of course, he's got a great website with a wiki. And on that wiki, there's a page. There's a whole section of it dedicated to World Edit. And there's this great page that lists out all the great commands in World Edit. 
So if you ever need to look up the reference, that's where you should go. Just go to Google and type in world edit reference. Oh, I forgot the best one of all. How can I forget the best one of all? Because I never use it, but it's pretty cool. So sometimes when you build, you maybe you make a big flat area like I did, and then the edge is kind of left in disarray. So one tool we can use is, it's called the brush. And it works very differently from most of the other tools we've been working with. So you actually need to get a different wooden tool out. Uh, I'm gonna get a wooden shovel. Thanks for coming, Entropy Mel. Hopefully this was useful. So you're getting a wooden shovel just because you're choosing a wooden shovel? So you can choose any tool other than the wooden axe that we've been using. And does it go in spot one? It can go in spot one, but as long as it's your hot item, it doesn't really need to be in spot one. Now that you've got your wooden shovel, if you type forward slash brush, and then we want to use the smoother brush, S-M-O-O-T-H. And you don't need the double forward slash for this command. I don't know why it's different. So what this command does is whenever you right click, it smooths land out. Which is much like terraforming if you've ever terraformed in second life. Very useful for making sharp, jank, uh, broken edges after using world edit smooth again so hmm. it looks like natural world brush yes. i don't see it doing anything are you right click right right click and hold and move it around okay i need to find an area that's not smooth i guess Oops. Oops. Yeah, I recommend doing this away from anything that you've built that you care about. Thank goodness for undo. undo. Oh, good. So undo does undo the brush? It does. Sick. So one of the brushes is called gravity, and it makes whatever you select with it fall. And that does not undo properly. <laughs> That's nice. So there's also a couple other brushes, and I never use these, I only ever use the smooth brush. But if you ever want a whole bunch of spheres, you can use the sphere brush. And if you ever want a whole bunch of cylinders, you can use the cylinder brush. And I can't for the life of me figure out what those are good for. I only ever want a smooth. Oh, but you have to put pattern and radius, what does that mean? Which one are you trying to use? The sphere. So it wants a pattern and a radius. So Does I that mean the kind of block? I think so. Yeah, so I did, um, here's the command I ran. Brush, sphere, dirt, five. And if you're not careful, you get stuck in a sphere. Let me try this again. Brush, fear, wool, five. 
Oh, oh my gosh, it's making them all up. <laughs> That's a mess. <laughs> oh, you have to type undo quite a lot. It's kind of like long distance building in Minecraft EDU too. Like you can be a long way from something and it'll build a sphere. It's like in Second Life, if you use the select tool, you can accidentally select something really far away. I deleted some really important stuff a couple of times doing that. I made a very tall cylindrical tower. Oh, look at that. You sure did. Okay. Oh, I didn't know about that one. Unstuck. So if you get yourself stuck, you can use the unstuck. That moves you to the uh, nearest free area. That's the unstuck command. I gotta remember that one. I like this. Of course, we didn't even talk about the sphere, H-sphere, pyramid, H-pyramid, forest. Well, I, th I think we need to leave something for another day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Because yeah. I can tell you that there are a lot of people who, well, how did my sphere get all the way over here? There are a lot of people like me who need to hear this more than once. So some of the people who left at nine are, you know, they don't want to hear it again. Of course, I can always watch the movie, but. Yeah, good things while I recorded it. This is, uh, this is cool. I've never played with this before. I'm building a little, uh, thing. Oh, if you hold the mouse button down. Oh, did you know you could stack undos? I just typed undo 10, and it undid my my last 10 commands. Oh, that's nice. I'm going to write that down, too. Undo.
Okay, I'm gonna tear myself away. This was wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I gotta hit the sack too. This has been great. It has been. I don't want to stop, but I'm gonna make myself. One more resource for you. You're such a good teacher. Yeah, you did, Mine, a, did a good job, man. Thanks. Too, too bad it doesn't of... pay what engineering pays. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, something to do in your retirement. Yep. Okay, so really good night, everybody. This resource, minecraft-ids.gramedgecom.com. And it's got like a little search interface so you can search for Minecraft IDs. Super helpful. All right, that's it for me. That's all I got for tonight. All right. That was a lot. Maybe we'll do a refresher course in the future.